Alright guys, welcome back to the next part of the Racing Lawnmower, part 7 I think. So in this video, we're going to be doing the same thing what we did to the front end. We're going to be lowering the rear end. And hopefully it's going to turn out good. So I was inside for a while trying to get over a stupid headache. And school starts tomorrow, which is a bit lame. But I am out in this garage working on this lawnmower. I also re-welded this side right here because I had way too much camber if you watched the last video. And now this side has too much camber. So I honestly think it looked better without the hood, really. See, look, that looks so much better, in my opinion, at least. I was going to put both front and the rear in the same video, but with just the front, it was already long enough. So might as well just make a separate video about lowering the whole rear end. Just makes it easier on me. So I just disconnected the battery, so now let's pop these rear tires off. So I just got the battery tray out now. And next what I'm gonna do is, is take this bar out and unbolt the rear end. If you're wondering what it is, is that when you push the clutch in, the belt won't go down there. That way you don't have to be cussing and screaming every time you push the clutch in to change gears. Hey Lucio. At some point I'm gonna be putting bearings in the wheels because the bushings in here are completely worn out. So after I made those other kind of modifications and re-welded the spindles and took a lot of the extra play out of the spindles, I took it down the road and it actually did do a lot better because the first video, I don't know what it was, but it was hopping up and down like crazy, like some dang bunny rabbit and crap. Best tool in the toolbox. Like that really did anything. I have had this steering wheel off probably about four times now. And the reason I have it off so many times is because I always do something different with the front end and the steering wheel is not in the center. I don't know about you, but that drives me insane and I have to have it right in the center. So I just got my brake linkage undone, my shift linkage undone, and my belt undone. So. Let's unbolt these rear axle bolts and drop the axle. So after battling with rust welded screws, the rear end is just kind of sitting over there right now. So next thing we I gotta do is, is cut here. Just cut this section out so the rear end will sit up higher up. So if you're wondering what's going on right here, I'm cutting out all the shift linkage, the old shift linkage right here. And I had to cut this part out because uh, I don't have a flywheel puller to pull this off. And it's just rust welded on there. So yeah, the whole rear end now is pretty gutted out. So I just robbed the air filter hose clamp off the four wheeler because I have to use this to put on the steering because somehow it came loose again after I fixed it in the last video. It wasn't really, wasn't really fixed, some mock up, but I'm gonna put a hose clamp around the entire thing, tighten the snot out of it, and hopefully the steering's gonna be tighter once and for all. Boom, got the hose clamp on. So I just made my measurements right here to know where to cut, they're pretty difficult to see. So I have my mini heater in here because it's freaking freezing in here. Shape deeper. Fire the angle grinder! Yeah, let's uh, bolt these triangle pieces back in and drill my holes and mount it up and see what it looks like. Alright, so this took freaking forever, but I got all my holes drilled right here. And here are the angle pieces just kind of halfway bolted back in. Uh, yeah, that sits a lot higher up there now. I drilled five holes on each side, so that should have plenty of contact, and I 
kind of oversized them, so if we need to, we can move the rear end this way, that way, or wherever. So yeah. Next thing I gotta do is I gotta cut uh, this part out right here because if we put our wheel under there, 18 by nine and a half by eight, um, yeah, that doesn't really fit in there. Uh, ow! Ignore the two by four. All right, so I got the rear end pretty kind of halfway bolted up. Haven't put the front brackets in yet, but yeah. It took a lot trying to you know, hold this thing. I've had a jack stands under here and crap. Check it out. Bam. Rear axles reinstalled. Rear axles fully bolted in now. This took literally the entire afternoon just to grind that down, drill all the holes, you know, mount all the things to put the rear end in here. This took all afternoon, but you know, when you watch Chris Fix or you know any other channels, it's like, oh yeah, take a bolt off, grind this, and rearing goes right in in two seconds. No, it actually takes a very long time. I only film like a little bit of stuff, then stop it, do it, and do it again. But yeah, anyway, with that, I got the front. If you're wondering, I put this bracket right here, kind of had to wallow out the holes a little bit, and that goes down to that, and same on that side. That actually lined up really good. So it's kind of late outside. I'm going to turn in for the night and come back out here tomorrow morning and finish this. Morning, Mr. and Mrs. Powers of the Internet. Not only are we building a racing lawnmower, we are building a evil racing lawnmower. Fire the angle grinder! That side's cut out, this side needs to go. Once I get this side cut out, I should throw the wheels on and be able to have at least a rolling chassis. That's my goal by the end of this video. This looks really, really good. Uh, only thing that kind of uh, bugs me is, is that the Craftsman logo is not right in the center. I measured that to right there, and that to right there, so I know exactly where to cut, so not one side's gonna look all warped. But I'll just put some kind of sticker right here just so just to make it look kind of in the middle. Also going around the edges, it's quarter inch round stock. Yes, I know. You can call me the biggest cars and cameras copycat ever because they did the exact same thing I'm doing right now. But ever since they built the, built the racing lawnmower with the vertical shaft engine, something about it, I've always like wanted to do it. I've always wanted to build that thing. That's like one of my favorite projects they ever did ever since 2016, because I used to watch YouTube a long time ago. I know this channel is like only in 2020, but I used to watch YouTube all the way back to like 2016. So I've been one of the Cars and Cameras OG subscribers. So the front end is lowered about, I don't know, four to five inches, something like that. The rear is lowered four inches because I measured four inches by three and a quarter inches and cut that out. That's the measurements if you're wondering. Oh, oh that looks epic. Let's, let me stand back and look at this. Ho oh, ho, oh, that looks so slammed and good. Come on, tire slam, tire slam. No. Of course not. Uh oh. All right. Ow, crap, that thing's dead. Yes. <laughs> Look at this. It's so low now. Yes, it rolls. We have a rolling chassis. Looks kind of ridiculous. It does look ridiculous. You know in the comments guys, which one do you think is lower? I'm also probably gonna get another tag and put it on right here if I can find one on Amazon. So now I got the round stock and I'm welding it on. Ow. 
So I just now got done with this all the way around. And yeah, it looks really, really cool like that. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Glad I got all this stuff done. Uh, that would, that round stock actually took a good while to do that. Uh, mainly to get it started. After it was started, it was pretty easy after that. But yeah, glad I got a rolling chassis. So I'm gonna put the wheels back on it, put it back over there, and next video of it should be hooking up the drivetrain. So that's gonna be, shouldn't be too hard. Just got to cut the center out. Uh, so I'm gonna throw it in there and go for a ride. And God bless y'all. See y'all in the next one.